Panda Tank saw that in advance and made sure he had at least five Immortals around the back. So we'll see what he can do in game number two, guys, as we load up into Daybreak. All right, guys, we are we are here. Game number two, spawning in the top right position as our red Terran player. He's currently down 0-1. He wants to come back, tie things up here in this WCS Challenger Division qualifier. He does not want to be eliminated. It is Roxas's project. And spawning in the bottom left position as our green Protoss player, showing he's not that scared of mech anymore, it seems, handling himself quite well. After the initial push did a, little, a lot of damage, we have uh, Cooler Master Storm's Panda Tank. All right, so we're on Daybreak now, and interestingly, Daybreak was one of the two maps last night where Panda Tank lost to a mech-style composition. So we'll see if Project uh, has that once again on the cards for this particular game, and what Panda Tank is going to be doing in response to that, or if indeed he has his own early aggression to follow. He's going to be feeling quite comfortable right now in a 1-0 advantage. By no means is it a uh, sit back and relax kind of territory for him just yet, but he now has two opportunities to advance as opposed to one. Yeah, definitely. You, you got a little bit of a, of a comfort space. You have a cushion you can kind of lean back on um, as, as Panda Tank. Although I, I do want to say, um, it, you've seen a good amount of Panda Tank's games. Do you think if we get a bio play out of... Um, out of project this game, slightly more standard. Is Panda Tank mm -hmm. a kind of guy that prefers that, that Templar tech anyway, or is he going to go Colossi versus Bio? Um, you know anything about maybe a, a preference that he has prefer between Storm and Colossi? So from what I've seen so far, uh, Panda Tech likes to get up to his Colossus tech and maybe just build one. Uh, I saw games that he played against Bio last night where he actually got one Colossus and really smartly hallucinated a second one. To try and get his uh, to try and get Hydra to overcommit oh. to making Vikings, but a, a really cool scan spotted that the second Colossus was a hallucination, so he didn't overcommit, and then we got into a really nice end game uh, where Panda Tank. I think he ultimately lost that game, but went for uh, went for that Templar tech anyway. So we, I tend to see both, but I do believe Panda Tank tends to favor his storms against Bio once he recognizes that's the play of the game. Yeah, that's that's one of those really popular strategies going for the very um, the, the, the fake out with that double forge play that we saw in the last game, mm -hmm. and then you get the Colossus, and then you just go straight into Templar, um, and it, it panned out pretty damn well for him. Um, but we do have Project going for a very fast factory this game. This could be uh, he's not getting a Reaper either, so this is about as fast as he's going to be able to get it without going for gas first. Of course, he did open with the barracks, but I'm, I'm more so curious as to what he wants to do with this. He's still on one gas. Um, looks like we could see some sort of marine, hellion, or, or mine play that, that SCV in the bottom bottom position, Jorasar. Oh, wow. What's he doing? Well, we have a starport being built here, Nathanius. It looks like uh, mm -hmm. the, the, very, very interesting. It, this could be just something that is completely and utterly prepared specifically for this map from Project, but now he has to defend against this early pressure. There shouldn't be too much here from Panda Tank. He's got a Zelda Stalker and a Mothership Core, but he is able to pick apart a couple of these units, and maybe with the Widow Mine he should be okay. Uh, yes, he will be. But let's keep an eye on this Starport right now. It's not in a position, I think, where he can add an add-on, because it's right at the edge. So I'm expecting to see uh, just very quick medevac production and some fast drops from our Terran player this time around. All right, you are, Jorasar. We do have the medevac on the way. I think, though, one thing that will end up favoring Panda Tank a little bit with this robotics facility on the way, as well as a forge, uh, just a single forge, is he, he knows. He, he spotted at the ramp, sure. Um, Project held him off, and Project's actually going to be able to get in here and scout everything as well, but Panatake knows, and knowing is half the battle, as they say. Mm. The medevac is out. We have a mine, six marines. This is just enough to fill this medevac up. Nothing going for any forward pressure. He will expand behind this, but is this drop going to do any damage, Jorasar? This is going to be, uh... I mean, if a drop's going to do any damage, this will be the time to do as much as he possibly can. The Widow Mine... Oh, so smart! Dropping the Widow Mine first! And uh, dropping the Marines on the other side. Uh, how? I don't even know if the Widow Mine was noticed there, Nathanius. I think that could end up being a sticking point. 
because the Widowmine didn't attack anything, and uh, only basically wait until the Widowmine was burrowed before the Marines went in. An Observer's gonna pop out though, and he will just about see the Widowmine just as the probes come back in. So really nice follow up there from Panda Tank. And in the meantime, we have got the six Marines now in the natural expansion, trying to do as much damage as they can. But between the Stalkers and the Motion Core, I think he's gonna get held off, but two more Widow Mines pop in. I like this play, trying to cut off the retreat of these units. Maybe he was trying to force the probes to transfer bases so that he could run them into the other mine. But um, he will be able to pick off a good number of the probes there. He has killed six so far this game. It's not quite as much as he maybe wanted to do with this fast of a widow mine drop. But, you know, it, it's, it's definitely something, Jorasar. And, well, plus one attack is coming up for Panda Tank. Um, but I, I kind of wonder, what do you think is responsible now that he's managed to hold off this aggression without losing too much? Well, the, the units lost tab shows completely identical uh, between the two players right now, and I think that the Mothership Core usage by Panda Tank there was pretty good. He almost has enough now for a Proton Overcharge as well in case a follow-up drop moves in. And yes, we did actually get a total of six workers killed this game from Project, but also bear in mind that three Widow Mines were lost, Medivac almost got lost, and a bunch of Marines as well, so it's not like Panda Tank didn't hold that off well. Uh, I would say Panda Tank would be quite confident after that, because at the end of the day, when you come in with a drop like that, a la Project, you, you're going to be in a situation where you want to do a lot more damage than that, and Panda Tank knows Project didn't get that damage done. Yeah, very, very important being able to recognize when uh, when your opponent's attack has failed. We do have the Twilight Council finishing up as uh, that plus one attack completes, and he's going to go straight for Blink. And this is this is kind of like a little bit that more probe. old school style. Oh, hero Whoa. probe managing to get in there. That, so that everything. Jack Bauer probe, man. He actually he went all the way into the mineral line, chilled out for a bit. There were like three widow mines and a bunch of marines. I don't care. I'm just gonna slip out. Something firing at him as he leaves, and he's like, "Haha, you can't do anything about this." And he's gonna live to fight another day and possibly plant a forward pile in the bottom position. A very very brave probe there. Yeah, definitely a nice touch. Plus two attack is coming in for Panda Tank. Uh, I want to see a Robotics Bay come up and maybe a little bit of Colossi Blink Stalker, but it does look like Panda Tank maybe looking to go for some sort of two base mass Blink Stalker style. That plus two attack is going to be done very quickly. This is something that I think we usually see a little bit more against Zerg players, honestly. The two base yeah. uh, plus two Blink Stalker. Um, seven game, really, but. We're going to have to see. This is a very interesting decision, especially since Stim is going to be done by the time this attack hits, if, he, if he's maybe just using it for defense. Um, but he's still only on a single forge, so he's not playing greedily. He's just playing a very, very interesting way. You're completely right. It's not that greedy. It's just odd that we see him playing this way. Um, three more gateways are about to complete, as well as Blink. Plus two lacking behind just a bit, but nothing a couple of Chrono Boosts can't solve. And uh, Project, at the same time, is going to be coming out with some MMMM over towards the third base location, just to make sure Panda Tank isn't playing greedily. He will spot that's not the case right about now. Maybe leave a single Widow Mine there and then head back towards the natural. Yep, it's not a bad idea at all. I mean, the Observer will be able to pick this off. No biggie. He doesn't ha quite have it with his forces, but the Stalkers gave him mobility. He wasn't actually able to determine um, super early on whether his opponent was going bio or mech. He still hasn't actually seen the full infrastructure layout. Mm -hmm. So Blink Stalkers, we've actually seen being used to pretty good effect of holding these types of units away, um, or at least very early mech pushes. So it's not a completely bad idea. But I feel like the fact that there's still no AoE on the field for Panda Tank is is really going to hurt him the longer this game goes on. Oh, uh, and Jack Bauer Probe has another part to play in this game as he spots the drops coming in from the south position. Panda Tank though has his units out of position out in the middle of the No, Jack Jack Bauer doesn't die, man. That can't be true. Jack Bauer just died, and we have a massive drop going in the natural expansion now from a project. He's going to be able to take out the Nexus because Panda Tank's army is so out of position here, and that's actually going to supply block Panda Tank at 90. This is a dreadful position for him to be in right now. How can he come back from this? I'm honestly not so sure. He's going to load up. The rest of those Marines are left to die, just <laughs> firing their guns away as they get laser beamed to death. But, you know, there's just so much else available, and... This is one of the strengths of Bio, is that Stalkers are just really, really bad versus it. There's <laughs> not really much else. Mm. Any other way to put it, Marauders just completely blow Stalkers oh. to smithereens. And I gotta say, 
Project's next push could be a coup de gras here on this uh, on this game for Panda Tank if he doesn't do something drastic. I think that might be right, actually, Nathanius, because we've got uh, three pylons now finally building for Panda Tank. He's been supply blocked to high heaven and back as it currently stands, and his opponent project has is comfortably enjoying a 50 now 60 supply lead against him, and I fear that even with Panda Tank's uh, potential half-decent composition here, it might not matter when the sheer number of units is that big. Yeah, I, I completely agree, Jorosar. I mean, he's got the Mothership Core to recall uh, if, he can, if he wants to try that or use the Time Warp to slow down um, Project's army. But now he's moving on towards the tower. Project's army is here. He is ready and waiting. He has Concussive Shell as well, so even just blinking is going to be a bit rough. Good Force Fields holding him at bay for now, but he is losing so much. Panatank dropping below 80 supply, and a drop is going to hit the main base at the same time. Alright, so can this drop get a decent amount of damage done? He sees the Dark Shrine as well. These Marauders doing so, so much right now. He is, in fact, going to be focusing down the Dark Shrine, but so much bio left out in the middle of the field. Panda Tank moving forwards with what remains of his Stalker Force, but he just hasn't dealt with this drop at all. The number of workers killed this game. Four Project has gone up to 14, and he's actually dealing with the warp in here as well. Panda Tank is in a world of hurt. Yeah, yeah, now he's running in towards the natural again. Same time, two direct TTs are going to split off, but there's a turret. Project will not lose anything to those this game. Drop in the back, and there's the GG and a tank. Surrenders. Game three, uh, we're going to have to go to.